Hey everyone, Mr. Sugeno here. In today's video, we're going to overclock the Raspberry Pi 4. Let's get started. Now, if you're curious, yes, this Raspberry Pi 4 has a ridiculous cooling solution on it. So this is a giant heat sink with a fan attached, and it does a really, really great job of cooling the chip. Since we're overclocking the Raspberry Pi 4, the chip is really going to heat up. And if you're wondering what kind of monstrosity cooler is this, I did a review and comparison video. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And here's the Amazon listing right up here. So we can see it is about $22.90, so it's a little on the pricier side in terms of cooling solutions. However, I wouldn't recommend not having a cooling solution if you are planning on overclocking the Pi. And more importantly than that, Considering this is the Pi 4, the Pi 4 runs a lot hotter than the Pi 3, so I would also recommend active cooling. And there's a big difference between active and passive cooling, so if you haven't heard the difference between the two, or this is your first time hearing active and passive, I'll keep things at a high level. This first solution here that I'm actually going to be using for this video, this is an active cooling solution. So you can see there is an aluminum heat sink just attached to the CPU there. And what it's doing is it draws the heat out into these aluminum fins here. This fan blows air onto the aluminum fins and kind of tries to get rid of the heat and cool things down. Another example of an active cooling solution is this iUniker case. So I highly recommend this case. The base actually is from the iUniker case that I am using. I've kind of just done a little bit of a hack job here to attach the two together. But the iUniker case, if you want to use the full thing, I would highly recommend this as well. So this contains a fan that mounts on the top. The case is an open air case, so there is no air being trapped. The fan helps dissipate the air and just spread everything out and bring cool air in to cool the Raspberry Pi. Now in terms of passive cooling, if we take a look here, this is passive cooling. There's no active component that's cooling everything down. There's just, for example, this little aluminum heat sink that's stuck onto the top of the chip. So this heat sink does draw out the heat, but there's nothing cooling the heat sink down. And these heat sinks are most commonly, I would say they're included with almost every single Raspberry Pi case you can get. And they do work, like they're, they're not useless, they do work a little bit, but if you are overclocking, a passive solution might not be the best way. Now at this point, some people might be asking, why overclock the Raspberry Pi? What's the point? And it's a pretty easy answer. First and foremost, I did a video a little while back on whether or not you can use the Raspberry Pi as a desktop PC. And while it handled everything fairly well, I think a little bit of extra performance, provided I've got proper cooling here, should help out things even more. The second reason is because I can. Why not? So I'm comfortable with taking the risks. I've got adequate cooling on the Pi. I can monitor it to make sure everything's okay. So I'm going to. Now, before I start overclocking my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to preface this by saying if you are overclocking your Raspberry Pi, do so at your own risk. It is very easy to ruin your Raspberry Pi beyond repair. You will be running the risk of destroying your Pi, potential components, or even something more disastrous. So if you are overclocking the Pi, do so at your own risk and exercise extreme caution. Now to start overclocking, the first thing I need to do is get my system ready. So what I'm going to do here is update my firmware. It's sudo rpi-update, that's the command. I'll enter it in the terminal. And what that essentially does is allows me to overclock my Raspberry Pi above the 1.75 gigahertz previous cap. So when the Raspberry Pi 4 released, it came out at 1.5 gigahertz. That was the clock speed. Uh, I believe the maximum overclocking ability was up to 1.75 and with the most recent firmware it brings it well above the 1.75 mark. Now the second thing I want to do is update my operating system. So after I've updated the firmware I want to update the operating system, make sure everything's ready to go and the command for that is sudo apt dist dash upgrade and all I have to do is enter those in the terminal. Now I previously did these steps when I was using my Raspberry Pi as a desktop PC in that video, so I don't need to do them again, but they are here just for reference. 
So it was reported on Tom's hardware here. I have the website up. I'm going to leave a link to the site in the description below that you can actually overclock the Raspberry Pi now to 2.147. The previous max was thought to be 2 gigahertz and before that was 1.75. So 1.75 was the factory overclock cap. New firmware came out that let you upgrade it to 2 gigahertz ish. And then after that, we can see now it's 2.147. So I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description below because it walks you through pretty much everything and they also do some benchmarks. So I'm actually gonna use the text directly from the Tom's Hardware website because it looks like it's correct. So what I'm going to do is I'll minimize this browser. I'm gonna open the terminal window. I'm going to go to where I need to and it is sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt that should open up where I need to edit to overclock so now I'm just going to hit control shift and plus just to zoom in just a little bit for you to see and now I'll scroll right down to the bottom where I need to add the text and paste it so there are three commands here over voltage 6 which over volts the Raspberry Pi it supplies the chip with more power so it can perform uh, arm frequency 2147 that raises the clock from the stock 1500 all the way up to 2147 so 2147 megahertz or 2.147 gigahertz and the GPU frequency is 750 so we're also overclocking the GPU once this is done I have to hit control and X then hit Y for to save it and then enter so now all I have to do is restart my Pi and it'll be overclocked. It's as simple as that. One thing I failed to mention earlier, I'm using the stock Raspberry Pi power supply, which is one I highly recommend. It's a very good cable and obviously one that's been tested with the Raspberry Pi and approved by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So I'm using the official one. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Um, but right now everything seems to be going okay. I'm also looking at the temperature. Everything seems okay. Let's run some stress tests. So I have three windows right now that I'm actively monitoring the Pi with. The window directly above my head, that is the CPU frequency. So what speed the CPU is running at? It says 600,000 right now. It'll bump up to 2,147,000, which is the 2.147 gigahertz. So that'll just bounce up there. If it doesn't hit 2.147, I know there's an issue. Now here is just the load on each CPU core. So there are four cores. You can see I'm not really doing anything right now. So the load is fairly low. And then the final box on the far top right of the screen is the system temperature. Now all of these matter in terms of monitoring. I want to make sure that my CPU, the biggest thing, I want to make sure that my CPU isn't getting too hot. I want to make sure that the overclock is working. And I also am just curious. So the load I'm not as worried about. It's more or less just for my own personal curiosity but the main things i'm worried about here are the temperature and the frequency so as long as i can get to the speed that i overclocked it to that's good and as long as it doesn't get too hot now the first test i'm going to do is a cpu burn this is going to load all of the cores make sure that the cpu the raspberry pi is stable this isn't the be all end all of tests there are also other things to worry about for example your micro sd card uh, components there are a lot of things to worry about but this is just a very quick baseline test just to make sure at a high level if things appear okay on the surface so right now all the cores are maxed at a hundred percent so you can see one two three four all at a hundred the temperature is going to rise so cpu burn has finished now nothing crashed everything looked okay the temperature didn't even get to 60 degrees celsius which is pretty awesome considering how much we've actually overclocked this so let's now take a look at a bit of performance testing and see how this holds up so the first test here is speedometer now this is a browser benchmark we should notice a bit Big improvement so at the end of this test it'll give me a number and it should be higher than when I ran this on the stock Pi now while this test is running I'm gonna bring up my windows here uh, just to see how everything is going so I can see that there is a bit of a load being put on the CPU not hundred percent really uh, my cores are at 2.147 gigahertz and the temperature is sitting at 42 it looks like it's creeping up just a little bit but at this point, I'm not overly concerned about the temperature since we just did CPU burn and this thing handled it marvelously. So the test just completed. When I did this with the 
just the stock Raspberry Pi 4, I got 16.8. So this is already bumped up to 21.5. So we're looking at roughly a 28% increase on this test, which is pretty huge. For this next test, it's a fun one. I was actually inspired to do it from Estefani Explains It All. I'm gonna leave a link to her video and her channel in the description below. I highly recommend checking her content out. She has a lot of great videos. What she did with the Raspberry Pi 4 was she calculated 10,000 digits of Pi. So she had it calculate 10,000 digits of Pi. It took the Raspberry Pi 4 in stock form three minutes and 41 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is the exact same calculation on the overclocked Pi 4 and see how long it takes. So here's the command typed in, ready to go. I hit enter here and it should start calculating. Now I can see that one CPU core is being stressed out to maximum, that's core three right now. My frequency is up to the 2.147 gigahertz and my temperature I'm going to assume might climb just a little bit here considering we are stressing out one of the four cores. So the test finished at two minutes and 35 seconds, which is a huge improvement. So if you remember, Estefani's test ended at three minutes and 41 seconds for the stock Pi. This one improved on it by over a minute. Now in comparison, I also did an overclock at two gigahertz and it did it at two minutes and 46 seconds. So just bumping it up slightly above the two gigahertz limit, uh, improved this by about 11 seconds. For my last test, I want to see how a 1080p video performs in the browser. So in my last video, just in the top right, you can see it. Uh, can a Raspberry Pi 4 be used as a desktop PC? Now in that video, a 1080p video in browser struggled. There are other ways to view 1080p video from YouTube, but I wanted to show just the in-browser experience. Now it did struggle playing actually this video behind me right here. So I'm gonna play this video in 1080p and see how it does. So it looks like there is still some screen tearing. This video is playing a lot smoother than it used to, uh, but it's still not perfect. It's a lot better um, than the initial test that I did. It's looking like the overclocking is helping, but at the same time, there's still it's still not quite there yet. And that might be just because of the browser optimization, and this will probably get better in the future, considering the Raspberry Pi 4 is still new. So a little bit better performance, but still not quite perfect. Now in this video, I'm not gonna be doing far more extensive tests to really dive into it. I'm just scratching the surface in terms of testing. So all I wanted to confirm was, could I overclock this to 2.147? Yes, I could, I confirm that. Did it run without issue? So far, yes. Now there may be some specific programs that run into issues or maybe crashing during certain points, but for me, I have not experienced any of those issues just yet or when I was doing any of this testing. Will this damage the Pi? I don't know yet. Temperatures are a good sign right now. They're down, which is always good, but I'm not sure about overvolting this. I'm not sure about anything else in a long-term perspective because I have literally just done this. And again, I want to caution you, if you are to do this on your own, do so at your own risk. You can seriously damage the Raspberry Pi, the components that are used with the Raspberry Pi, or something potentially much worse. I would strongly recommend doing some additional reading. Definitely read the Tom's Hardware article because that's where you can find all of this information. Anyways, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.